Today's guests are two of the men behind the powerful new documentary, The Holly, which shines a light on police corruption and gentrification of black communities in Denver. Director Julian Rubenstein and executive producer Damon Davis are talking with us all about the making of the film and more. This is Advocate Now. Well, Julian and Damon, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on your documentary, The Holly. The film explores and exposes the street violence, police corruption, and gentrification of black communities in Denver. Why was it important for each of you to create this film? Uh, well, for me, I just started uh, reading about this story in the New York Times after a sh this shooting where involving Terrence Roberts. And when I got uh, to Denver, where I grew up and, and ended up moving back here to, to follow the story, it was really kind of like riding a bull for a while. But um, I kind of started to realize right away that in the community, there was another story that was understood to have been what happened than what was being, you know, projected in, and, and broadcast in the media. And there was a lot of coverage of it. So uh, at the beginning, it was partly about trying to find out the real story and actually tell an alternate story of what was sort of being told. Damon, why did you want to be a part of it? Well, I personally, um, I met Julian through a mutual friend, another filmmaker, and he, he had already been working for years on this project. And um, he asked me for some notes and I didn't, you know, I get asked a lot and I didn't expect to see su such a such a such a, a great film, to be honest with you. And so uh, later on, he asked me if I would come on as an uh, EP to help to help out to get the to, to one, make sure the message gets out and, and to just help navigate this uh the world of documentary film especially for for knowing terrence and Ter terrence um is a black man from from a similar situation i by no means have lived the type of life that terrence has but but i come from a similar neighborhood i just thought it was a super um important story and i think that it's a it's, it's a story that is basically a a, a microcosm of different things that happen in a lot of different uh communities across the United States. You referenced Terrence, a former gang member turned activist, Terrence Roberts. Tell me about him. I think uh, that's something, I, Damon can start on that because uh, he has a really interesting context for, for Terrence and uh, I can add to it. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how interesting it is. I, I, I grew up in a neighborhood um, and I mean, it, 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 it wasn't the worst neighborhood, but, but street culture and, and gang culture was just something that I was adjacent to, right? So, but but when I, I met Terrence to see him be, uh, to, to, to reform his life, I, I told him when I first met him that I would have probably, I wasn't him, but I was probably one of those kids in this program. And to see people that, uh, I, I had some older people around me that had been uh, around the street life. And those were usually the people that were coming back to help the community. And that was one of the main, uh, points to why I want to make sure his story was told because he was it, it was just incredible but I, I don't um I think Terrence is an incredible person anyway and I think that I, I don't I don't think we should get too caught up on just that he was a former gangbanger and all of that because those are the circumstances and the opportunities that were allowed to him and to many other people that come from environments like we come from and that, that's not a defining factor and, if, and once you see the fa the film it's not so much a defining fact about who he is it's much more that he's he he is a person um, that's ex extremely intelligent, extremely compassionate, and he can and he has found a way to overcome different adversities. And I think that's the important thing. When I met Terrence, I mean, he was, you know, incredibly compelling and partly because I sort of felt like he was just like oozing this, you know, kind of energy that wasn't just from him, but almost from like decades and even generations of what so many black men have gone through and struggled with. And he, what he'd been through, what his family had been through, what his community had been through was so symbolic of all of that. And that's what I thought made his struggle particularly compelling on top of the fact that, you know, I started to discover that something other than what not only was being reported, but what the you know, district attorney was saying had happened, had happened. And then, you know, to see the way that the really the system wanted to kind of get him out and replace him with something else 
that was not better um, even made it just more, you know, important. Well, Julian, you wrote the book, The Holly, which this film is based on part of that book. And that took years of investigative reporting. How did you first get involved with the investigation? Um, basically, you know, I, I, so the, when the shooting happened, there was a story in the New York Times. I was living in New York at the time, and I read that story and having grown up in Denver. And just at the time being, f fortunately, I was in between assignments and I was really interested in what happened. Why did this anti-violence activist shoot someone in his, his own peace rally? And there was a lot of, you know, uh, tension in the community over it. It was a community, historic community, black community in Denver that was also undergoing a, really a lot of gentrification and a lot of redevelopment of some important sites. So I flew out, was staying with my mom, met with Terrence, and I just over time, you know, slowly um, basically started to gain the trust of people who really, you know, are people who are hard for outsiders to, to gain the trust of. And a lot of media, I had the advantage of doing something that I knew was going to be either a book or a long form. I, I started turning the camera on once I realized I was kind of standing in the middle of what felt like a crime in progress, not just reporting on a crime that had happened because of what was happening in the wake of this incident. Um, but so I just took, you know, my own initiative as I do as a, as an independent journalist to try to pursue the story and it kept, you know, showing me more and more, you know, um, things around every corner and I just stuck with it. But it was a challenge, that's for sure. Well, at its core, I mean, this film really explores and highlights the dangerous effects that power can have on a community. What do you think the film's findings say about power in the U.S. in general, Damon or Dan? Uh, I, could, I could take that one. I, I think it shows that, uh, one, power is perceived and the, per the perceptions that we have around power is usually around money. And so we're, we're watching actively how money and how uh, force like like police, how that how that's a certain type of power. But there's also some nuance to that because Terrence is showing the like the level of power that he has and he ain't got the money he got. But he he he's straight up in the community and he building with the people. And that to me, what it shows is that the real power is with the people. Because you don't like that. That's that's from relationship building and trust. And if he was, and and if and if he wasn't powerful, then he wouldn't be a problem, and they, he wouldn't be on their radar. So the fact that he even is, is shaking things up to that degree shows you that I think we as regular citizens have way more power than we give ourselves to change the the dynamic of things and to change the way our everyday lives go um, on 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 a on a macro scale. You know what I mean? I think I think that that's what. That's what I got out of the film. And that's what I hope that other people get from it. Well, Julian, this is also your directorial debut. When it comes to investigative documentary filmmaking, there, there are always risks. What were some of those risks in making The Holly? You know, one thing I'll talk about, you know, I'm talking about it for, for the first time in an interview right now. I'll tell you that um, uh, I'm right now in a, in a protection program funded by the state mm -hmm. due to threats on my life. Yeah from a guy who the city of Denver hired to replace Terrence as an anti-violence worker. This guy is a self-proclaimed gang member, a self-admitted murderer. And um, this just exposes some even more the problems that I exposed and shows the risks involved. Um, I'm actually going to LA to talk at, a, at a, a conference of lawyers who defend people like me. This guy, before threatening my life, tried to sue me unsuccessfully and the whole team including, I think, I think Damon was named. I can't even remember. He named all kinds of people on the team. Um, it was a re really an attempt at intimidation. Um, so um, that's really important to understand here because it's one of the reasons that these stories don't get reported. And it's one of the reasons that problems like this continue to happen in our, uh, not only in our cities, but really in, in, in any place in America, well, Julian and Damon, we thank you so much for the work that you're doing and, and basically putting your lives at risk in order to tell this story and to bring out the truth. Thank you so much for that and for taking some time to talk with us today. Thank you. I'm Sonia Baghdadi. Thanks for watching and advocating. For more stories and content like this, visit advocate.com and advocatechannel.com.